Where we're insulated from need, it's easy to come up with narratives in which poverty is just about uh, personal irresponsibility and self-destructive behaviors. And let me be clear, this is a real issue. And there is no doubt that people often feel a certain hopelessness and then self-medicate uh, or engage in self-destructive behaviors that make that hopelessness self-fulfilling. And one of the areas, one of the most exciting areas of research now in the, in the area of poverty is the, about the power of hope uh, as an antidote to poverty, as a way of breaking the cycles of poverty. And there's some fascinating experiments going on that suggest that, that you know, ho and hope seems like such a fuzzy concept, you know, how can it really make a difference compared to drilling wells or, you know, handing out uh, bed nets. But programs that kind of inspire and give people hope, and there, there's one, actually one major experiment going on to see if, if uh, talking about spirituality may have this sort of inspiring sense of, to, uh, for behavior change. Uh, we don't have the results yet. But um, there is this sense that hope can help change these behaviors. And I guess what I'd say is it's, it's complicated. And it becomes much too easy if one is insulated to just point fingers and say, oh, you know, you just need to, to change your behavior. And if we're gonna have this conversation about personal responsibility, and it's a perfectly legitimate one to have, I think we also need to have the conversation about our own responsibility where we see need and disadvantage and don't respond to it. And that's also, uh, I think, fair game.